Today we're going to talk about primitive reflexes in the newborn and we're going to demonstrate some of those reflexes here on this newborn Robert. Robert is one month old, he'll be five weeks tomorrow. And um, you can see I've got Robert covered up to keep him warm for the moment, but I have him undressed down to a diaper and that's going to be important when I'm assessing those reflexes so that I can really see the movement of his body um, without there being clothes in the way. Just a few um, general words about primitive reflexes. Primitive reflexes are involuntary movements that are present in the newborn. They originate in the lower portions of the central nervous system. So they should be present in the newborn. If we see them, um, that we see that they're absent, um, we may be concerned about proper neurological development of those lower centers of the central nervous system. As the baby grows and develops, those reflexes should actually go away or integrate. And so if we see that those reflexes do not integrate, we may be concerned that the, that the higher centers of the central nervous system aren't developing properly because as those higher centers develop, um, baby gains the ability to voluntarily control movements and then these reflexes should go away. And I'll talk about each individual reflex and when it should uh, appear and, and integrate, but uh, in general, we really see most of these reflexes gone by six months of age and certainly by, by one year. Um, if they don't go away, they could interfere with, with proper development. So the first reflex we're going to look at is the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, or the ATNR. So Robert is sort of doing a partial ATNR right now, but what we do for that reflex is we turn the head to one side, and we see flexion of the arm on the head side and extension of the arm on the face side. And so it's also called the fencing reflex. So we'll turn to the other side. We always want to assess both sides so that we can see um, if there are any asymmetries because asymmetries can be sort of a red flag. And Robert's pretty relaxed here, so he's, there we go, there comes that reflex. So we see a little bit of extension of that arm on the face side, flexion on the head side, and again, here's we see that ATNR kind of kick in. Um, this reflex usually is uh, present at birth and integrates by about four to six months of age. If the reflex persists, it can um, get in the way of development of good eye-hand coordination and reaching and grasping. So the next reflex that we're going to look at is rooting. And so the rooting reflex is sort of a, a, a food-finding reflex. So I'm going to just stroke Robert's cheek here. He's not happy that I took away his pacifier. And you can see he turned his head to find that stimulus and then to suck. So we'll see if he goes to the other side. And he does. He overshot it a little bit. And that's a real classic rooting when you see that head going back and forth. Um, and so we see that Robert has that reflex present. Most babies uh, all should have that reflex at birth. And it usually integrates by about three months of age when the baby really starts to gain good head control and doesn't need reflexive movement for food finding to find that nipple um, on the bottle or on mom's breast and can really just go to it on their own. The next reflex we're gonna look at are the grasping reflexes. And so I'm gonna note that Robert's hands are mostly fisted, but they open a little bit. And so when they're kind of open here, I'm gonna put my thumb in his palm and you can see he's grasping me sort of rather, rather tightly. And then we see the same thing in the feet. So if we push on the toes, we see those toes curl, or push on the ball of the foot, excuse me, those toes curls pretty strongly. And so this grasping reflex um, in the palm, the palmer grasp usually integrates by about four to seven months of age. Planner grasp is gonna integrate by about nine to 12 months of age. And this really coincides with development of reach and grasp um, in the upper extremity. So if the reflex persists beyond four to seven months, then the baby's gonna have trouble developing the ability to voluntarily grasp and release an object. And if reflex persists past nine to 12 months, um, as in terms of planter grasp, then baby may have difficulty learning to stand and walk. Okay, so the next reflex that we're gonna look at is the gallant reflex. And that reflex um, involves holding the baby in sort of a prone or a suspended position. And we stroke the spine and we see here that the baby shifts his hips towards that the side 
So this is also sometimes called, and his is just not very strong right now. He might be a little bit young for this. Here we see it a little bit there. And there we go, back to the other side, one side, and then the other side. There we go. So that reflex sometimes is also called like the trunk um, incurvation because you stroke along the side of the baby's spine and the trunk actually curves towards that side. And again, you do it in prone or a slightly suspended position and usually you'll see those hips shifting back and forth. That reflex is gonna integrate um, at around three to six months. And then uh, the Moreau reflex is one that I usually say for fairly late in an assessment because it can be upsetting um, to the baby. Um, it's essentially a startle reflex, and so, or the startle is actually a component of the Moreau. So what we do is we hold the baby in a seated or sort of semi-reclined position, and we drop in back, and we see the arms extend out to the side in a startle, and then they come back in toward the trunk, and then we see the cry. And so there's three parts to that reaction, or that reflex. Again, you drop the baby's head backwards, usually catching it in your hand, or you can put a pillow behind them so that the pillow can catch them. You see the arms extend outward in a startle, then the baby brings the arms back in, and typically, typically cries as well. And this reflex um, typically integrates by about three to five months, but again, we do see sometimes when, when even adults are under extreme stress, they're, they're going to startle. So, um, but this, the startle shouldn't be nearly be as strong um, after about the three to five month age range. And then finally, the last um, reflexes I'm going to show you are the standing and stepping. And so our newborns actually should, <laughs> should be able to stand and bear some weight. And Robert is bearing some weight here. It's definitely on sort of a bended leg and it's... it's and then we're gonna see maybe some stepping out of him. Let's see, we turn the baby forward. Mm. He's not doing very much stepping right now, which is really not that uncommon um, for a baby at five weeks. We see that newborns are going to um, when placed in a standing position, they are going to bear weight and stand. And if you lean them forward slightly, they're going to do some stepping. But often by about one to two months, these reflexes begin to integrate or disappear, um, really simply because the baby starts to gain weight and the legs really become, and the body really become too heavy for the baby to support and for the baby to do some stepping. So at one to two months of age, it might be a little bit early for that to be gone, um, but not, not that unusual. This is a reflex that you're really, those st standing and stepping, you're really gonna see in those really, really new babies. Um, but again, once they're usually by about two months old, we see those reflexes, the standing and stepping reflexes disappear. So that's just a little bit about reflexes. Thank you, Robert, for helping us today.